we'll we'll return to some of the points that you made at the end once we once we transition to the, the Q and A. So I think what we'll do now is just move on to our our next speaker. So David Sibi is the president and founder of Beach Corps, a new kind of volunteer vacation that combines the best of a great beach vacation with meaningful activities helping sustainable causes. Before starting Beach Corps, David served for 27 years as a U.S. Foreign Service Public Affairs and Economic Officer, focusing mostly on Latin America. During his career, David excelled at creating and supporting public-private partnerships and partnerships with nonprofits to support sustainable development, particularly programs targeting at-risk youth. Currently, he lives both in the Dominican Republic and here in Washington, D.C. David, thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. It's a real pleasure to be here with with Emma Fawcett and Dr. Martha Honey uh, here at the uh, Global Foundation. This is this is a really important dis, uh, issue we're discussing. Uh, I think I'm going to be adding, uh, touching on some of the points that mm -hmm. Emma made, which I completely agree with, and I'm very happy. And I want to I want to read the report in more in detail. Um, Beach Corps has been a fun company to start. I just just retired in April, and we're hoping to start operations by the end of the year. Um, uh, it's a great company. My main challenge is getting people to say Beach Core, like Peace Core, and avoid the Beach Corpse image, which is something <laughs> I'm trying to uh, not exist. <laughs> it happens all the time at the Dominican Republic. It's pretty funny. But uh, anyway, but uh, um, we're, um, we're starting out with some good partners, but I'm not here to talk about my company. I'm really here to talk about service travel as just one part of the whole a question of how can sustainable tourism contribute to development and sustainability in in the Dominican Republic? How, what are the prospects for it? What are what are sort of the the, the tricks that you can think about doing? And uh, I would say that first of all, you have to note that there's a tremendous uh, and sustained demand for service travel. Um, it is uh, if you look at uh, one of the reasons why it could have a big impact. If you notice the correlation between people who volunteer and what they donate, then you can see how people who want to take volunteer vacations are quite willing to actually donate money to the causes that they support. That's one of the tricks I think that people need to be thinking about as they look at how service travel can improve and add to the sustainability of, of, of the Dominican Republic. There was a very important study in September of 2015 last year, about a year ago, by Tourism Cares. Tourism Cares is the uh, tourism travel agent arm of the tourism industry, and what they do is they organize a lot of service travel, a lot of volunteer vacations by travel agents where they actually go to places and they do some you know, fun, act light activities where they clean up beaches or they build something, but the actual travel agents travel places to show that they are not just out there selling tickets and they're actually caring about the places that they are getting people to visit. It's a wonderful organization. Well, they found out that there's a huge untapped demand for service travel. And the number one markets for this that are really where people are clearly looking for more opportunities are millennials and young people with families. There's simply not enough out there to, to, to cater to what these people want. And uh, even though it's a big industry, you know, cl close to $2 billion a year, it's still a niche industry. It's nothing compared to the overall you know, leisure travel market. So there's a lot of room to grow, in my opinion. Um, what is existing service travel, and particularly in the Dominican Republic? Um, there are a variety of for-profit and non-profit companies in the Dominican Republic and around the world. Some of them are doing fabulous work. Some of them are really great. Some of them get in the news and, and, uh, and get some bad publicity. Um, some of the ones that I think are doing very good work in the Dominican Republic are Discover Corps. That is a private company that uh, has a formal kind of partnership with, with the Peace Corps. And um, they take, from what I can tell, they cater towards a somewhat older crowd. Um, and then there's International Student Volunteers, which is a nonprofit. Uh, again, what, what I, I raise those two to say it's really not important whether you're for profit or nonprofit. What's more important is what are your projects doing, what are they achieving? in terms of sustainability. But one of the uh, interesting things about these is that they cost a ton of money. 
a um, little cheaper in the Dominican Republic because Dominican Republic is closer and, and uh, travel expenses are lower. Uh, places, a place like Kenya, for example, for 10 days, $4,500. Um, tremendous high cost compared to uh, other potential. Um, but for, for these other places, about $2,200 to $3,000 for eight days of, of uh, volunteer work with, with, the other, with the other existing uh, firms in, in the Dominican Republic. Why would the Dominican Republic be a great place to focus on service travel? I think, first of all, because it has stunning beaches, which I think people really want on their vacations. It has wonderful biodiversity. It has excellent culture. There's a lot of places near the tourism resorts and lots of wonderful aspects that uh, cur current tourists, are, I don't think, are seeing the real the Dominican Republic. We have friends that have gone down several times to Punta Cana. They fly into the airport. They fly five minutes to an all-inclusive resort, and they leave a week later. And they say, we've been to the Dominican Republic three times. <laughs> and we say, you've never been to the Dominican Republic. Excuse me. Um, and, uh, and obviously, the travel infrastructure is important. But let's get into the problems of what's often referred to divisively as voluntourism. I feel voluntourism should be a neutral term. It pains me that I'm now, as a marketing tool, not going to be referring to beach core volunteerism, because I think volunteerism is simply the combination of volunteering and tourism. It could be good, it could be bad, but too many people, if you go on the internet, um, too many people see volunteerism as, as a derisive term, and they just simply reject the idea that, that anything good can come out of people trying to do good on a, on a regular vacation. They think, no, no, you have to be there six months before you can have any real impact and, and this kind of thing. And they're very, very uh, uh, doctrinaire about it, let's just say. Um, but there are reasons that there's a lot of criticism of existing so-called volunteerism. And I think that the, the number one reason is that uh, they, a lot of the existing service travel, a lot of the existing vacations where you go and try to help a cause perpetuate a culture of dependency. They create this feeling like the volunteers are the heroes and the the poor people there are the are the desperately helpful. Oh, thank you, sir, for helping me. And um, I think that that is, that is one of the key problems. A lot of the volunteer projects out there in the world are also not consciously designed to be sustainable. They are designed to in a very short amount of time and for as little amount of money as possible, please the traveler to create the impression that the traveler has seen the real country and made some small, tiny difference. But there's no real plan for five years, ten years out. And you can't really point to how what you're doing could possibly, even if it were repeated many times, have a long-term impact. And then you have to actually have some real downright harmful effects. The most uh, notable, infamous effects of volunteerism uh, people are getting upset about nowadays are orphanage volunteering, particularly in Cambodia. And there are many documented cases of fake orphanages popping up where, because there's such a demand for this, people will rent out their kids to these fake orphanages to pretend that they're orphans and that obviously creates a bad dynamic, and you often end up actually, the kids end up staying there forever, for whatever reason. So there are horror stories in, in service travel and volunteer vacations, but I think that it would be wrong to sort of conclude that there's no potential. Uh, and in fact, I do think that there are ways to uh, address the problems, and that the Dominican Republic is particularly poised to create a kind of tourism that taps into the main sources of tourism, the main strengths of the country, but also avoids the problems of typical volunteerism. Oh, and I'm sorry, one, one of the things that they do in these things, one of the problems that they do is they often steal jobs. Uh, if there's not a careful planning of a, of a volunteer project, you often, like if you just go and start building something, and you don't consciously use the project to create new jobs, you've probably taken away jobs. Um, and there's some horrible, some incredible stories of people. Uh, one, I remember reading one lady in Africa, she, she went to go uh, build, and she wanted to build. People love building. They love 
painting and building. They feel they must have a physical effect in order to help a cause. And she, she was there and she was ashamed at how bad her bricklaying was. Well, you know what? It actually takes some training to be a good bricklayer. So every day she would build her wall a little higher at the end of the day. She'd say, God, that's crappy. And then miraculously, when she came back the next day, she'd say, I didn't do such a bad job at all. Wow, that's actually pretty straight. <laughs> What she found out is they'd been tearing down the work she'd done during the day and had a professional guy put it back up so, and she'd get back the next day and feel, oh, I'll be okay. Um, so these are the kinds of things you need to avoid, obviously. Um, the, the summary of what the, the Dominican Republic service travel can do is, first of all, find a way to take service travel and link it to your quality hotels. Because, I hate to say this, folks, but most people on their vacation, they want air conditioning. They want to kind of live in a nice hotel. And people nowadays often only have two weeks out of a year, and maybe they actually like to yell at somebody if something's not right. Well, that means they want to stay in a place that's nice, and they want to basically expect to have good hotels in their volunteer vacations. The other thing that you need to do is figure out ways to have more activities that tap into the culture and create a people-to-people -people connection. Instead of this mentality that uh, one of the great nonprofits that I hope to work with, uh, with Beach Corps, is, uh, um, uh, is, is in the North Coast, and they have many people coming in and volunteering in the Cabarete. Uh, it's called the Dream Project, the Cabarete area. And my friend told me one time, David, I'm tired of painting the same wall for the 10th time. And what they're trying to do now is move away more from painting activities, more to English teaching activities and stuff like that. So they're moving in the right direction. But there's a lot of people who, who just uh, feel that on their volunteer vacation they have to paint something or build something or they haven't contributed. Um, in terms of sustainability, I would encourage people to check out the hashtag men not end. It's a, it's a hashtag that, that recognizes the potential for service travel but recognizes the problems with it and wants to fix it. I would say Sorry, that what's the hashtag? Men did not in. It's right behind you. Oh. Um, it's, uh, and I think another issue that you need to address is lower costs because there has to be a way to keep costs lower so that more money can actually travel to nonprofits. Another thing that I would recommend is to try to figure out a model that completely separates the cause from the vacation. Right. Too many service travel, uh, almost everybody nowadays, uh, basically you pay one price and at the end of your volunteer vacation you, you ask them, uh, how much of the money I gave to you guys went to the cause I just supported? And they're like, eh, well, they might be able to tell you the answer, they might not, but the bottom line is it's not a very loud amount of money and they can't tell you the answer. So I think that you need to completely separate causes from vacations in order to have the maximum effect. And then finally, um, you know, picking up on what Emma was talking about, partnership. There really needs to be partnership between the private sector, between nonprofits, um, and between the government, uh, and everybody doing what they do best. Again, I said this before, but I want to make it one more time. The real problem in service travel nowadays is the way they market themselves. They make you feel like your Mother Teresa walking into a village <laughs> and people are going to throw rose petals at your feet as you walk in there. And, and it's not realistic in one week, two months, you know, maybe even six months. I mean, you shouldn't be promising that because you shouldn't be the hero. The hero are the people that you're supporting. The heroes are the causes of the kids that are trying to develop an education for themselves under, as we said, one of the worst education systems, if not the worst education system in the entire Caribbean. Uh, and one of the worst education systems in all of Latin America, from what I understand. Um, the, the heroes are the people who work in the foundations that are there, to, there today. You go there for a week or two weeks, you're going to be gone. The real heroes are the local heroes. And the more you can kind of strike that into people's heads, the better off you are. That's why Beach Corps' motto is a little grain of sand. We say the volunteer and their work and their, their, their effort is a little grain of sand. It's nothing means absolutely nothing unless other people are moving in the same direction and building in the right direction. So I think that that's the, the basic idea. So again, summarizing, going forward, I think partnership is, is the key. The most important actor, to be honest with you, is the private sector. Uh, I, 
I worked for the public sector for 27 years. I'm not anti-government. I love the government. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I think the government is good <laughs> in general. But really what you're talking about is, is nonprofits and, and people who want to make change, finding ways to align their interests with the private sector so that you guys can help each other. And then in general, what you, you want to do, of course, is align yourself with the public sector. At times, formal relationships are, are helpful. But quite honestly, I think most of the work can be done simply by great private nonprofit partnerships uh, to, to, to advance um, uh, the change we kind of need in this. And then the last, the, the last thing I would say is be a little ambitious in what you do. Try to seek some kind of cultural change in your projects. Don't be content with just um, doing X amount of building or uh, saving, planting X amount of trees, but try to get people's mentality to change. And one of the most important and easiest ways that can be done is to install, embed the pay it forward concept in every project. Every project that should be done, anybody who benefits should be expected someday to pay it forward. If it is only cleaning up the trash in their local community or participating once a month in a beach cleanup or you can imagine, you can, you can do many of these kinds of things. When you install the pay it forward a concept to service travel, you attack a very fundamental problem in the Dominican Republic. Uh, I think they call it the, uh, the Dao, the, the, the concept of the Dao or something like that. It's the local terminology. It's the idea of gimme, 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 like I'm poor, help me kind of thing. And you tell people you're not weak. You can change your own destiny. And when you add that element to every single project, cum cumulatively that impact can make a, a big, big difference in, in a country and the way that they uh, address every problem from you know, pollution to one day even corruption in, in their own country. Uh, those are the kinds of changes you can do when you tell people that they're not weak that can actually make uh, a change in their own communities. Um, and uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Davis. Um, as I was saying with Emma, we'll return to, to your interventions and we'll try and do a, a, a quick summary of, of what you were talking about before we, we enter our discussion. But um, before we do that, uh, Juana, I'm going to let you do the transition for, the, for Martha's presentation. Um, and I'll, I'll take that opportunity.